Yo, what's going on, people? What's going on? Oh, shoot. Hey, man, my name is King, and this is Candy. Candy, 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 Candy. We are the King and Candy Show, so thank you for joining in and a ham clap to you. God. Golly, man. So what's going on out here in the world? We have a wonderful, wonderful show out there for you today. Thank you for tuning into our show. And if you enjoy our content, please continue to keep downloading, sharing, and subscribing. How do you think about that, Candy? That makes a lot of sense. Also, if you want to show us some love, consider supporting our channel by going to Cash App and donating to King Candy Show. The link to that, as well as to our email and our website, will be down below in the description. That's right. And also, shout out to all of our people out there. Buzz Sprout, you get a shot. Apple Podcast and Google Podcast, Amazon Podcast, all of y'all podcasts and iHeartRadio. <laughs> so we just want to let everyone know ah, this is the second show. It's been over 24 hours that I haven't used any profanity words. Are you okay? Oh my gosh. I think we need to get like, the emotional support out. I hope you feel better. Oh, it's okay. I don't want to say it, man. Don't do it. I don't want to say it in your head. Just don't say it. I don't want to say it, man. For so bad. It's okay. There, there. There, there. Hey, so. Oh man, I that crash. You have walked into a, a basically the twilight zone and where you have Egyptians and other Egyptians just coming together clapping. <laughs> they didn't know we were Egyptians, did they, Candy? No. No idea. It's a bowl of molokea waiting for these people. Oh my God. For those of you that don't know, that's like a really amazing um, Egyptian soup made out of a green vegetable. It's like the best thing ever. It's like the best. It soup is. Ever. It really is. It really truly is. But oh, it's a doorbell! I think it's time for the current events. <laughs> what the freaking freak is going on? Go ahead, Candy. Show us the current events, girl. Okay, gladly. Thank you so much for that lively introduction. Hurricane Ian could gain strength rapidly. Uh, They are battening down the hatches. There's so much weather going on right now. Are you freaking serious? Mm -hmm. Scientists have created a material that can think. Hmm. What? Science, the link to that I know. Scientists have created the first example of an engineering material that can spontaneously sense, think, and act without requiring additional circuits to process such signals, similar to the brain role in the human body. This kind of technology makes you go... Hmm. So I wonder if they put that into like one of these mega robot android things that they have walking around and talking to people. Like, will that technically turn that entity into a human? Because it now has its own thoughts. Yeah, man. I, I, I think it's, I think the reality of robots having uh, inter interrelationships with humans are right around the corner. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Think about it. On a real note, like, the f- cell phone that you have is skin. It's mm. literally skin. It moves up and down. Yeah. It feels. It has emojis with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it, and it cracks. And it cracks. I'll be glad when they come up with a cell phone that don't crack. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I know that, um, that, that was the problem that the that the baby boomers had with cell phones. It wasn't that they couldn't get the kind of technology. It's that they were so freaking flimsy. They're cracking all the time. 
Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? They're used to things lasting forever, like, you know, like the Metal Age and the Bronze Age and, you know, the Industrial Age. You know what I'm saying? Except for us, dude, the crack cell phones. We, dude, we cracking cell phones. Like, how many cell phones are cracking every month? Oh like, gosh. three, four, five? Oh, my God. So I don't know what to say, dude. I I, I think it's I think yeah. it, it is what it is. Hey, do you like swimming in the ocean? Uh, yeah, kind of. I like swimming in the Mediterranean because oh. that water there is amazing. There has to be some kind of underground extraterrestrial just sitting, chilling there, just waiting for dudes. Okay. Well. Be careful if you like swimming in the ocean because a mom went swimming in the ocean and was eaten by a great white shark during the family vacation. So maybe just like, you know, if you want to go for a swim, just That's find a-, a pool. Why, why, why do you think she was eaten by a great war? Right, like what, what, what in her life? Mm hmm. What kind of karma did she accrue? Or not even the karma. Like what, what, like what's really going on? Like, how do you go there? Yeah, and then you don't and come then the back. Shark is like, "Hey, you, you look delicious." Yeah, dude, that's just sad. Dude. I don't know, that's sad. Well, as Fargo's in trouble again, we all know their sordid history with making bad decisions and tricking people. Not the most ethical history there, but they're in they're in a lot of trouble again. So, if you have Wells Fargo. Either for a car loan, a home loan, or for your bank account, you might need to look that story up and figure out if it affects you. Oh, shoot. So the Can- a Canadian mayor is telling his um, constituents, leave now as hurricane starts to hit their area. They're Where? Canada. It's a hurricane about to go in Canada? Yeah. I didn't know hurricanes have Canada. Yeah. Like, yeah. Had freaking... They have crazy weather in Canada. I didn't know that. That's yeah. crazy. Nah. But yeah, they're like mandatory evacuating their people because it's about to hit really hard up there. That's sad, dude. I didn't know they had hurricanes in Canada. Yeah. Hey, does anybody know about angel numbers? Angel numbers, what are they and what do they do when you see them? Are you seeing, you know, a sequence of numbers all the time? What is a freaking angel number? I think, I think, uh, the, you know, for us that uh, are connected to the Fibonacci sequence, this three six nine vibration, we constantly see these numbers, and it's not based off of something that's mystical or or, or etherical. It's literally based off of something that you're constantly seeing. They say that the, the nuance of the brain picks up on certain numerical um, numerical vibrations in the atmosphere. It's almost kind of like we can sense as humans, we can sense the 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 algorithm that God put onto the planet. Does that make sense, Candy? Yeah, I've never heard it put quite like that. That's very eloquently stated. Yeah, but n- numbers are everywhere around us. We see them. We look at them. They're watching us on TV. We're reading newspapers. They're on phones. There are countless other things that numbers are all around. So we got to be conscious of these numbers that when you're seeing them. Can- Candy, can you give me like a sequence real quick of numbers that people could actually see? Sure. Four, four, four. Four, four, four. You you can see two two two. You can see seven uh, eleven. You can see eleven eleven. You can see all kinds of numbers. According to numerology, the study of numbers and their meaning, angel numbers are like a code message for you. An angel number have unique significance and sacred meanings. So the number you are seeing also holds a specific message, and you are to work it out what it means for you in your actual life if you pay attention these repeating angel numbers and trying to understand the cryptic message you're sending yourself between you and the etherical body which is called the universe When you set out to decode your angel numbers, you will see what it takes, the knowledge of the individuals and the meaning of what it means in your life. But once you understand the angelic message, it will help you to find out multiple things 
that is going on in your actual life. Get the freaking freak out of here, Candy. Get the freaking freak out of here. That's awesome. I love hearing about stuff like that. That's so interesting to me. Yeah, man. But it's like at the end of the day, you don't have to go to like a um, psychic or anything. Like right. God is already psychicking your your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. <laughs> the psychics don't want to know that people are getting these numbers. Shit, it, 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 it's going to be like, oh, man, I ain't going to see Cleo no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, this whole thing without cussing. I miss cussing. I would have said about five or six cuss words You're doing already. Great. You're doing great. Keep it up. Lord, have mercy. I don't know how, I don't know how normal people do it. <laughs> oh, this, this is ridiculous. So, is there any other current events that's going on out there in the world? Candy! Well, only if you consider a new island forming in the Pacific Ocean after volcanic eruption is news. Oh, what? Because that's what's happening. And what Pacific underwater. Ocean? Because I know there's like a um, a ring of fire out there in the middle of the ocean. Oh my goodness. I don't know. The article just said it was in the Pacific Ocean. There was an underwater volcano that erupted. And it's forming a new island. I wonder if uh, rich people will buy it and go party there. <laughs> hey, good look for those rich people coming to go buy it. NASA also spacecrafts are successful in crashing into a distant asteroid. Oh, thank God. Oh, shoot. Let's give it up for NASA. Uh, it was due to crash into the Indian Ocean. So thank goodness they, they got rid of it. But But check it. It's all math, baby. <laughs> it's all math. Right. right. Dude, the computer got so much math that that computer could land on a fart on top of that asteroid. <laughs> you have no idea. You have no idea how much math is actually going on with these people. That's why I'd be like, it's almost like, it's almost like there's idiots running the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, and then the scientists kind of just sit back and, like, form their own reality. Right, right. Like, where you have robots and cell phones yeah. and computers. And right. it's like it's like idiots and geniuses live together. And the geniuses are constantly saving the idiots. Yeah, and the geniuses are constantly saving the idiots. And the, and the geniuses are, are sitting there just looking at the idiots as they argue over politics and religion and different things while they're sitting up here thinking about sing, sending a probe to an asteroid that's a million miles away that's is, as big as a fart coming out of a hole. <laughs> Do you, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so... Let's keep it moving, man. This has been a wonderful current event time. What do you think about that kind of? It was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> you got to get in your car. <laughs> you got to stop your engines and you know you so far. I want to take this time out, Candy. This is a special time for us out here in the world. We're going to take this time out to do... I think this is the Scottish, no, the Egyptian National Anthem. That's it. Beledi, beledi, beledi. Beledi. Yes, that's the best national anthem. That's it, baby. You heard the, you heard the, you heard the, like, the strings on that joint? Hold on, let's do it a second time. Them strings. Ugh. Gotta go to Egypt. Be with for Eddie. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. It's right, it? right up there with the, um... It, the American. That's right. It's a, it's a doozy. It's a doozy. It's a doozy. Oh, man. Okay, we're going to transfer our vibration over here to actually... Deny. Oh, wow. no. Not wow. again. I've heard that before. Oh, i got to get some milk this he time. Needs some oh. milk. I need some milk, woman. I thought you were a vegan. 
You better stop it now. Maybe it's almond milk. Almond milk? I got a dusty pipe oh, waiting oh, okay. for you, girl. All right. Oh, we're going into the um, donkey of the day. Are we ready for that, Candy? Always ready. Okay, it's not going to be the donkey today. I think it's going to be... Oh, my God. Let's say the tiger of the day. Oh, rare. The tiger of the day is actually when humans do weird, weird things and, and then tigers show up. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, okay. Not quite, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the tiger of the day is showing <laughs> humanity and how, how ridiculous they are mm. amongst the nations of that are actually contributing to, you know, the knowledge of self. You know, the knowledge is, is a powerful thing, especially when it gets in the hand of a dummy. Ah! Really? Let's see. Here we go. We'll be right back. If you are anti-woke and love freedom, success, entrepreneurship, business, financial literacy, and the opportunities available from free market capitalism, then you'll love our show. We approach these topics with passion and a common sense anti-woke, did I say anti-woke, point of view. We also intertwine politics, crime, economics, and other trending topics that matter to you. Alpha Uncut. Check us out. Uh, highlight one thing in particular, that being the foster care system. Ashton Kusher, my man Ashton. Oh, Come on, let's give Ash, it a hand clap for Kirk before we get into because he's doing the he's doing the tiger of the day. You know what I'm saying? Little horses around him. Wow. Little horses around him. Wow. That's right. <laughs> Ashton Kusher, he, he stood in front of a um, uh, uh, body of his peers mm -hmm. speaking out about mm -hmm. specific topics. Let's, of let's, suits. let's listen to him. Uh, highlight one thing in particular, that being the foster care system. There are 500,000 kids in foster care today. I was astonished to find out that 70% of the inmates in the prison across this country have touched the foster care system, and 80% wow. of the people on death row were at some point in time exposed to the foster care system. 50% oh of these kids will not graduate high school, and 95% of them will not get a college degree. That's crazy. But the most staggering statistic that I found was that foster care children are four times more likely to be exposed to sexual abuse. Mm. That's a breeding ground for trafficking. Right. I promise you that's a breeding ground for trafficking. But the reason I looked at foster care is that it's a microcosm. It's, it's a sample set that we have pretty extraordinary data around to date, even though we can't seem to fix it. It's a microcosm for what happens when displacement happens abroad as the unintended consequences of... <laughs> Dude, that's... I don't even know what to say, bro. Those numbers are devastating. I I don't listen. Like, I I we do a segment called Straw Hats, right? Mm -hmm. Like, pull out your straw hat because conspiracy theorist hat. Oh yeah, tinfoil hat. Yeah, tinfoil hat. Get your tinfoil hat out. Like when you hear the numbers of right. of the statistics of these foster kids, right? And how like foster kids kind of like have penetrated the veil of, of the underworld and how they kind of get souped in there. It reminds me of like reading uh, the Bible and the old, the new Testament of how like, oh man, how vivid, um, how vivid some of the new Testament is when it comes to, uh, defining a reality of like having s different seals broken, and then like you see these angels coming out of the sky, and it just reminds me of like there's certain people on this planet that don't have a chance, and they weren't born with the chance, and it's and the people that are in power. They're just putting band-aids on shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Putting band-aids on the flesh. Meat. It's like it's literally like just putting band-aids on it. And the band-aid might last for like five years, ten years, but as soon as they get out of 
out of their position, that Band-Aid gets ripped off. Mm -hmm. And then the new guy, the new woman that's there, they put another Band-Aid just to last for five to ten years. So they won't, it's like nobody's actually dealing with the problem. They're just all putting (laughs) Band-Aids. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's all temporary fixes and the root issue is never resolved. It's never resolved. We got to get to the point as humans that we start to resolve these issues and stop, I guess, stop pushing it off on the next administration. Right. That's a really good point. Yeah. So let's keep that in mind. Get your straw hats out. We're going to the words of wisdom. Are we ready, Candy? Absolutely. Let's do this. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> Which should be obvious okay. if you pay attention and think about it. If you send a ship straight to the horizon, right. eventually it begins to disappear until it's no longer visible beyond your horizon. Right. And you should ask yourself, what s- kind of surface would produce that result? Um, the ocean? If, if it's con... The ocean has a ramp. <laughs> it's like a parking lot. And the ocean just, has a ramp. And, and, it's an elevator. Yeah, it's an elevator. Yeah. Then, uh, you, you get to a certain point, they just like going down. Sea fairies do this. And so, what, however flat they would have imagined the Earth to be, they, it, they, couldn't, have, it, they couldn't have accepted it to be completely flat, because otherwise you would never not see the ship. Okay. Also, if I just tell you, Chuck, walk due east. Okay? Right. And don't ever stop. Right. I just turn around my chair and face this way, and eventually you're going to come back. Right, and you'll probably be about 150 <laughs> years old. <laughs> no fast gun. That is how long it would take me to run the Earth. For me, the fact that there's a rise of flat earthers is evidence of two things. Okay, one. One, we live in a country that protects free speech. That's actually kind of awesome. And two, uh-huh. we live in a country with a failed educational system. <laughs> Our system needs to tell you not only what to know, but how to think about information and knowledge and, 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 and evidence. If we don't have that kind of training, you'd run around and believe anything. Anything. Hmm. Interesting. So I think one thing that he highlighted in that Waves of Wisdom is that people running around um, believing in anything and trying to put some responsibility on the system, on the system that that's there. I I don't know how. Uh, what 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 do you think about that, Candy? I think he actually mentioned something really interesting. He said, "Okay, so number one, we live in a country with free speech. Okay, that's great. We all know that." The second thing he said is a little troubling, actually, because he said. It's a failed education system. It's evidence of that. Okay. I agree. I actually agree with that. The part that startled me a little bit was the fact that he said, because the education system is supposed to teach you how to think about information. I think that an education system should not beat into people how to think and process information. I think that's more of a computer uh, motherboard system. I think humans should be able to be presented with facts and data and then use their own knowledge and intuition to figure out how to best um, interpret that data for themselves and what that means for themselves. So if you give me all the info and satellite images and everything on how the earth looks, I don't want you to teach me how to interpret that data. I do want you to provide me with factual data scientific data that's you can back up and prove right but i don't want you to say okay so now process it like this and think this and this is how you should think about it that's i took it a step too far but But it's true a lot of schools do teach kids they overstep their yeah but but check it man but i also i think there's also a piece to this to where certain truths Mm -hmm. are a part of national security there are certain truths that if they get out in the public, what would the public do with that truth? Would it harm their daily lives? So when we're getting into how the curvature of the earth and the shape of the earth 
and the shape of the universe. When we're getting into those talks, I, I think that's the time to talk. And like, just let it be that. I, I think people are getting too involved in the talk. I think one thing that humans do best is talk. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, let it be a bar- let it be a barbershop talk. And if there is a truth that's behind that veil, that is protecting humans from what? Is there other lands outside of the lands that we know of on our map? Is there, you know what I mean? Like, is there, so what? Even if there is like a Jolly Land, a Shambhala on the other side of of the Willow's Tree, like what the sense would that make? You can't go to it no way. You don't have no, no boats and planes to sh- charter there anyway. And at the end of the day, the people that are controlling it don't want you to know no way. <laughs> and so you got to eat what's in the grocery store. So I can understand why the flat earthers are, are rising up. And I can understand why those that have a little bit more information about the shape of the earth is there too. Right. Like it's not... It's not a coincidence, and you can't blame it all on the school system. The school system is set up there that set up the banking system, set up to redline, set up to uh, process, uh, set up to um, disadvantage specific right. ethnic groups. Yep. Like these systems are used to not just control others, it's also control the wealthy, control the poor, control the crabs in the bucket, control to make sure people are, are leaving this and coming back in it. You know what I mean? So, like, hold up, homie. Like, let let the talk be and don't degrade it, but mm-hmm. let's unpack it. And if you don't want that talk to go on anymore, just censor it from the internet. Just yeah. like you do everything else. Right. So, uh, you know, so put that on the algorithm. No flat earth. Take that off. You can't say flat earth no more on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. Oh, man. Well, let's go welcome to the dumb stuff uh, and see how we can get there. Um, today's show. Did we go over that today with the day show? Kim? No, I think we skipped it. But it is about Drew Barrymore and Jeanette McCurdy bonding over their complicated relationships with their mothers. And have you ever been on a cruise, like a ocean cruise, King? I have been on an ocean cruise. Did you love it? I don't like big boats okay. or big ships. It so may be. Yeah, maybe something in my DNA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe. They say black people have like a fear of like water and boats and things. Mm, yeah. But I don't necessarily believe that too, because you go to Senegal, you go to Egypt, you go to different it's places where people live in the water. Yeah. Like they dipping and diving, floating with the fish. They, <laughs> you know what I mean? They, my one homie in the Mediterranean, he had a pet, um, pet whale. He called Willie. Wow. Wet Willie. <laughs> Isn't that Bill Clinton's nickname? No. Oh, Slicky. <laughs> Slicky Willie. Willie Willie. <laughs> but uh, a Carnival Cruise Line comedian was fired for using the N word during his stand up routine twice. Good, good job for him. <laughs> Very frail looking Anglo Saxon. But anyway, th- those are our topics of today. Yeah, I was waiting for some white people to get out and say the N word. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? What? Yeah, I've been waiting. What? I've been waiting. Wow. This is what I've been doing. I've been waiting to the left. Waiting to the right. <laughs> what the? Uh, no. uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the dumbish. Tolerance for people like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, isn't a lack of a father the reason you hate trans people? What? Lack of a father? Man, you hate yourself? Shut up. Man, here's the thing. Man, I, it's hard for me to care about this when nobody cares about me as a black 
human man. You feel me? Like, Caitlyn Jenner is just doing what rich white men been doing since the dawn of time, which is whatever the hell he want. So why should I care? What, what make him so special? But, but as a black man in this country, shouldn't you care about the civil liberties of others since they're so closely related mm. to, to your struggle for equality? But you're talking about, I do care. Look, I don't have a problem with gay people, trans people, because that's tolerance. But where's tolerance for people like me? You know what I'm saying? Like, <sighs> look... I should be able to say something that's weird without people hating on me, all right? Look, I never I never said anything about taking away nobody's rights, all right? I, never. I understand what you're saying, but some people found your remarks offensive. Yeah, well, freedom of speech. It is freedom of speech. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's definitely at least two sets of roles, if not three to five sets of roles, and certain people are okay to say whatever the heck they want, do whatever they feel like, and no one can bat an eyelash, but there's still certain segments of society that are marginalized, that remain marginalized, um, that can't say anything. Sad. Welcome to the dumbish. A thousand years ago, uh, the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. Baghdad. Europe was busy disemboweling heretics at the time. Baghdad was open to all thought at the time, between AD 800 and 1100, around there. If you look at the advances that unfolded in that period, in that location, it includes uh, the, the, the invention of algebra. Algebra is an Arabic word. Algorithm is an Arabic word. Two-thirds of the stars in the night sky that have names have Arabic names. How does that happen? Just, what, where did the naming rights come from? It came from the fact that at that time, huge advances in the Middle East, in Baghdad in particular, um, was uh, unfolded in engineering, mathematics, especially mathematics, astronomy, navigation, um, uh, physiology. And you say, well, why is that so? If you look at what was going on, they were open to all lines of thought. Jews, Muslims, Christians. There were doubters back then. Today we would call them atheists. They would all come around a table and share ideas. If you have some philosophy that's got holes in it, someone's going to find it. And you're going to challenge you on those ideas. And what happens is the conversation ratchets up. You discard what doesn't work and you keep what does. And when you do that, you make discoveries and you make discoveries rapidly. And at the time, that period drew to a close. If you read history books, they'll typically describe sort of the, the sacking of Baghdad. It was a bad time for the city. And they say, oh, it all came to an end. However, the Islamic culture rose at other times later. And in those other times, science and engineering discoveries were not a part of it. So he asked, what, why not? You got the cultural heritage. Why doesn't it show up again? And then you got to dig a little deeper from the sacking of Baghdad, and you find out there was a, a Muslim cleric, Al-Ghazali was his name, who was to Islam what St. Augustine was to Christianity. St. Augustine kind of laid out the rules for how to be a good Christian at the time. A lot of people were practicing it in their own way. He codified it. He was a religious scholar, figured it out according to his own read, told everybody how to behave. There's the book. You follow this, you're a good Christian. Al-Ghazali said, you follow this, you're a good Muslim. In that text included the assertion, which gained influence socially, but then politically, so then it had power of influence. In there was the assertion that mathematics and the manipulation of numbers was the work of the devil. The entire enterprise collapsed and never recovered. It has not recovered since. If you look at the number of Muslims who have won the Nobel Prize in the sciences, it's one. Number of Jews who have won the Nobel Prize, one-fourth of all Nobel Prizes in science have been won by Jews. How many Muslims in the world? 1.3 billion. How many Jews in the world? 15 million tops. So you look at what effect the culture of discovery and learning can have on what you discover about the natural world. It's extraordinary. So just because you're making discoveries doesn't mean it's forever. And I look at the 20th century in America as a period of great discovery. Then I see forces now operating against it. And then I look at the history of the consequences of this, and I see America just simply fading into insignificance. No, it's not off of a cliff. It's just a slope. 
and every next day you're a little bit further down on the slope. You barely notice it, right? Until one day you can't see over the hill that you just came from. And then you try to make do with what you have down here, and then you find out it's the rest of the world making the inventions and not you. You're trailing, no longer leading. You're not even abreast with what's going on. You're running behind trying to catch up. Welcome to our main story, Drew Barrymore. Are we freaking ready, Kanye? Yes. Hello. Somebody's at the door, Candy can you please get it? Yeah, hi. Oh, it's Drew Barrymore and Jeanette McCurdy. Come hey, on Drew, in. Drew, like you, love you. <laughs> <laughs> so Drew Barrymore had Jeanette McCurdy on her show, and they bonded over their comp- complicated relationships with their moms. So, as you all know, Jeanette McCurdy wrote a book called I'm Glad My Mom Died, and um, Drew Barrymore had her over to chat about it. The iCarly alumni uh, joined the talk show host to launch her new digital series called Barrymore's Backstage on Monday. And um, Drew Barrymore, if you all know, her acting career started when she was a child. She was the star of E.T., and she shares that in common with Jeanette McCurdy because they're both child stars. But... Um, McCurdy talked to Barrymore about decades of torment, exploitation, and manipulation inflicted by her own mother, and that she suffered for years in silence. Drew and Jeanette spoke about the complex and challenging work of self-understanding and mothers in general. Um, and so Drew Barrymore admitted that when it comes to our moms, we want so badly to have a good relationship. It's nature, nurture, it's evolution. Um, and Drew then asked when you met your therapist is it true that you were like my mom's great things are good because it's kind of like you feel ashamed to admit that your mom is a pos right or that she's abusive like inherently like in your soul you don't ever want to actually have mom like that or have to say that about your mom it even just sounds horrible saying it even if it's true because there's such a reverence for that um that i guess status in society right there's Mother's Day. There's all kinds of things to honor moms. But what about when when the one that you were, you know, stuck with <laughs> or the one you were given to at birth is not a balanced person? So they, they had a great conversation about it. I Hopefully I feel Jeanette may feel better after talking to Drew because Drew, again, was a child star, had a very complicated relationship with her mom. She's been very outspoken about drinking at a very unengaged, being put in adult situations that no child should be put in um, as a young age, and at the fact that her mom is the one who was permissive and allowed it. She's actually like a drunk before she was 13, Drew Barrymore. It was really sad. Really sad. So she had to go to rehab multiple times. So anyway, they were able to bond over that, and I hope Jeanette kind of found... Um, a role model or a mentor in her. Drew Barrymore is such a sweet lady. She's a really nice person. Man, hey. I think just being able to unpack people's lives that are in the public, I think that's an issue. And I think I think these organizations, these tabloid organizations, they most definitely are capitalizing on um, people's lives, you know, uh, the sensitive lives. But when you're a celebrity, that's kind of what you sign up for, right? You sign up for everyone to have an opinion about your own personal life. And that's completely unnatural. You know what I mean? Um, is there, was there some things that happened to Drew uh, Barrymore and Jeanette McCurry that were, that were, um, that were wrong? I mean, by their voice and their word, yeah. And I think that needs to be respected. Um, and I think that needs, I think they need to be able to tell their story. And, um, I think that the public needs to kind of move out of the way. Um, and I think there needs to be some kind of reparations for them, you know? Absolutely. Uh, so, but it sucks to hear, hear like your favorite artists, your, these talented, really talented actresses in their craft and, and see their life turn out, uh, like how it is. And I hope everyone else out there in um, TV land and radio world, they listen to these stories and they can, um, you know, instead of going to Hollywood, you know, you think you want to go to Hollywood and 
be this bright star. There's an underworld behind, you know, the wood, the the hollows wood, as they say. Uh, the the hollows wood is the witch's the witch's um, uh, wand. You know what I mean? So yeah. So Hollywood, yeah. yeah, it's named Hollywood. Just look it up. It's it's the witch's wand. So there's a lot of magical underworld stuff that goes on, but there's also a crew. If you can get with a crew here in Hollywood that is that don't play that okie doke stuff that don't play that with don't play that evil witchcraft you know what i mean you get with that crew and roll and you know wait your time wait for your card to come up then you'll be able to see what's going on um but if you don't get with that crew there's a lot of other crews out here that uh will most definitely compromise you compromise your mind your sanity your body your just everything you you've had to offer to the world, and you know, sticking children in that environment is, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody should do it. Even though you know, kids sell a lot of, lot of, lot of TV. Nobody's protecting those kids like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they should be protecting them, but they not. Shit. So that I think that's what this story is telling. Can we please get into the carnival com- comedy with the dude saying about yeah, the N word? This, this is, is so crazy. weird. So there's a carnival cruise line, and of course they have different things there to entertain you. One of the things they have available is a live comedy show. So a Caucasian comedian is in hot water after being accused of using the N word multiple times during his performance on a carnival cu- cruise. His name is Rob O'Reilly. Um, and the people weren't able to catch him actually on video saying the N word, but because at first they were just kind of like shocked by it and you're not supposed to take video of performances. That's part of the rules at Carnival Cruise. You can't tape the performances, but after he said it a couple of times, people were like, no, we're catching this on film. And they pulled their phone out and the crowd started heckling him like, dude, what are you doing? Wait, what you're saying is not okay. You know how he responded to that? He said, if you're offended, get the F out. He he dropped the n n bomb multiple times casually, and then told people to get the f out if they're offended. You don't like it? Get out. I don't know if he realizes the year that it is. It's not 1922. It's 2022. You can't. That's not okay. It just details. I think Candy. It details how much people are. Yeah, shoot, it, it it's both sides of the balancing scale. On one side of the scale, you have people uh, that have been oppressed that want to move on, but they want to move on with their bags packed with money, right. and rightfully so, right? right? But then you got another side of that pendulum that have has done the oppression and have somewhat benefited from it, and then some have not. Like, I think it's all, especially with this whole racism thing, I think it's all smoke and mirrors. A lot of people, a lot of people that oppress people in society are not benefiting financially from racism. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, I, they, they, not, they not doing it. They not even the managers to some of these corporations. That, so, literally, that oppression is kind of set in, in spew by... Uh, just by inherent managers of corporations that come from those backgrounds of mm-hmm. ra- racism, that they instituted uh, pillars of racism to, uh, you know, to make the managers feel important. You know, sometimes people feel important when they're oppressing other people. I don't know. It's kind of like yeah, sadistic. It is. Um, but they do. Yeah. So the reality of it is, is that, He's this dude is doing comedy. He's not benefiting off of he's not benefiting off of um off of telling jokes about black people. Like No, he's not. The crowd turned he, against not, him. Yeah. Carnival responded the right way by saying Carnival does not tolerate what happened. He's um not allowed to ever perform again. He lost his job, he's been fired. And not only that, not only is he not allowed to come back and perform, he's not allowed on Carnival cruises. Like, even as a civilian going on a vacation, he's been banned from even 
buying a ticket and getting on a Carnival cruise. So I applaud them for like doing I, the right thing and I, saying, no, we don't stand for what he did. I, like, I get it. I get it with the whole banding thing. I'd rather him not be banded. I'd rather him uh, be able to uh, see uh, a, per- a black person, a uh, man or woman, a child or, or young adult or adolescent, and be able to uh, help them with their credit. Be able to walk into the bank with them to to actually get a financial loan and you tape it on YouTube. Like you actually do something beneficial for that community that, you know, you're having these words kind of slip out, you know, just like me. I had to stop using profanity. This is my right. second time. Stop using it. So I'm I'm still funny, even without it. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, you definitely like are. so you gotta understand like now it's not the time to like throw hate words at one another. Now it's time to walk in and and start, you know, with your hand oh with these black people, walk your hand into the bank, walk your hand into these financial institutions to help them to establish themselves. Uh, because that's one thing that's happened, uh, just disadvantaging people with this whole racism. I bet black people wouldn't even mind if you would call them the N-word if they had a whole bunch of money in their pocket. Correct. I wouldn't. I, I would just build... If I had a whole bunch of money in my pocket, I would just build a big wall uh, with you over there and me on the other one with a big old yacht chilling in a boat laughing at you calling me the N-word. <laughs> Success is the best revenge. Yeah, man. So I, I wouldn't be tripping, but you, some people do. So thank you all for um, coming. Um, oh, shoot. The police coming. Oh, no. <laughs> thank you for um, coming to our show and tuning in. If you enjoy our content, please continue to keep downloading, sharing, and subscribing. This is about to be it for our show. So all of those... Also, if you want to donate or anything to the Cash App, you can do it. Yeah. Or not. (laughs) You can definitely show us some love. Consider supporting our channel. Go to Cash App and donate to King Candy Show. That link will be in the description below, along with our email address and our website link. This is the true and living. We, where we focus on peace, Peace, justice, justice, and and truth. truth. Uh, And when you get that, get the knowledge of self. Please, you you need the knowledge of self. Knowledge of yourself will open up doors and worlds that you cannot imagine. Uh, and you also have to embody the infinite power of yes. I wrote a book uh, a couple of years ago about the infinite power of yes, of how yes actually opens every door to you. Instead of thinking so negative, you have to think in a yes mentality in four, in a sequence of four. And this sequence of four of yes, 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 yes will open you up to an environment that you most definitely will change your life. Also, here we focus on getting back to nature. If you don't know what that is, I'm here to tell you getting back to nature is the new wave for the climate. Right now, as we speak, there's storms and hurricanes barreling down on Florida and Texas. And may God and all the ancestors be with them. (sighs) I digress. We have to take upon ourselves to do everything we can to align the planet and to get back to nature. The best model that we can get back to nature as human, human people, is start to recycle. Start to go plant a tree. Start to reserve your water and your resources. Have, Have commune and communication about these things online. Throughout, get back to nature. We have a nonprofit coming coming up called Get Back to Nature. And getting back to nature is what we're most definitely going to do. And we're going to teach people. We're going to assist to plant, plant a thousand trees in one month. We're going to do that. We're going to assist to bring water to, to, to Jackson, Mississippi, to different places where water is not there. We're, we're, we're going to do that to get back to nature and plant trees, plant gardens. Get people connected back to the net to nature, so we can start to change this climate change issue with ourselves. So we stop having all this drastic, drastic storms that are doubling up on us. We got to get back to nature, y'all. I love to talk to you. My name is King. I'm about to get out of here. See ya. Peace.
the restoration.